Hi everyone, I'm here to give you some editing tips for use in the ecosystem. The new course ecosystem updates our look, is meant to be responsive, so great for cell phones and tablets. As you can see, it resizes pretty well. And it enhances accessibility. The ecosystem relies on clean code and the use of pre-formatted templates where possible. So for instance, you no longer need to add sizes to things like tables and images. That said, you'll need to be familiar with what we'll cover in this video, which is the Drupal toolbar. Before we jump into specifics, let's first take a look at the page we're on here. Notice the black editing bar at the top of the page. You can see this bar when you're logged into a course, and it's designed to give the page a clean look. It doesn't obscure other text, and it includes the tabs for, that you're used to seeing for view, edit, outline, and revisions. This is also a good time to mention that the view and the edit modes are a little different from one another. In the view mode, you see the page as a course user does. In the edit mode, some of the stylings disappear. So watch this gray box as I toggle between the view and edit modes. If I move to the edit mode, the styling for that gray box is gone. Back in the view, you can see it, of course. I'm going to return to the edit mode so that we can take a look at the Drupal toolbar at the top of the page. Which buttons can be used and which should be used with caution or which should you stay away from? Most of the items on the toolbar can be used as always, but please be aware of the following. Please reserve the use of the underline button for styling URLs that are links. Justification buttons can be used, but if you find that you're in need of a lot of that kind of styling, please contact us so that the style can be added to the style sheet. That way, justification will happen behind the scenes and won't require special attention on every page. The indent button should be used only when you are making a multi-level list. Text, color, and background buttons should be avoided. If you have a need for color and require some assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Please avoid the font and size drop-down menus all the way to the right here, and the styles drop-down menu to the left. Because many of the items available in these drop-downs have been deprecated or replaced with newer HTML constructs, so please avoid their use. If you require assistance with styles for coding, we can help you. Just let us know. You shouldn't need to use the table button because we have some table templates set up for you. The same goes for the insert image button. We have templates set up for you and we'll talk about these in the content templates video. So be sure and watch that video. I want to make sure to mention the differences between the paste buttons. Here, there are three of them. When you want to paste text from elsewhere, say from a Word document into a Drupal page, please stay away from the paste button, which is the one on the left, the one actually called the paste button. Adding text with this button can cause your designer or design assistant to spend time cleaning up the HTML to remove unnecessary code. Sometimes a lot of unnecessary code comes over when you paste with this button, like pages full of unnecessary code. So which of the remaining buttons should you use? Well, that depends on what you're doing. If you're pasting from a Word document that has lots of formatting in place, like this example, whoa, come over here. There's italics, there's bold, there are bulleted lists. If you're pasting something like that, you want, and you're in Word, you want to use the Paste from Word button, which is the one with the Word icon here on the right. If you're pasting basic straight text with little or no formatting, like say a paragraph like this, then you can use the Paste as Plain Text button, which is here in the center. Think of these paste buttons as conversion buttons. They help convert your text without adding long strings of unnecessary HTML code. 
please ask your designer about this if you need assistance. And one last thing, if you're considering pasting from, say, a PowerPoint presentation, or if you're using equations, or if you're trying to cut and paste images or tables, just don't. Ask for help. That's what we're here for. Let's talk about headings before we finish up. And I'm going to switch to a different page here in a different course. Think of headings on a page as working like headings for an outline. You have main headings, like the title heading here, Lesson 2 Reading Assignment, which is nice and big. And then you have subheadings, like Reading Assignment and Points to Consider While Reading. This first heading, Lesson 2 Reading Assignment, is a heading 1 by design. The heading 1s are reserved for titles. And then heading 2s are reserved for menu items for navigation, like things over on this side. So that means that any headings that you add to this page will be headings, heading 3s or smaller. This is a heading 3. This is a heading 4, as it's a subheading of a heading 3. So if we look in the edit mode, these are easy to see. Reading assignment shows up right here as a heading 3. Points to consider while reading shows up as a heading 4. If you wanted to add another heading, subheading to heading 4, it would be a heading 5. You can format it using this button. There. One last thing. Notice that these headings are bold by design. They don't need to be bolded. They should not be bolded. And here they're not. They stand out by design. They don't need any extra enhancement. If we return to the view mode, they're very clear. So that's pretty much it. If you need a style that we haven't thought of, or if you have questions about anything involved with our ecosystem, please contact your learning designer. Thank you.